In the video of today, we're gonna be diving to the world of streams in Redis. We're gonna understand what they are, how they work, and how to get started with them. So sit tight and let's get started. My name is Rafael De Leo and this video is part of my journey learning Redis. If you're interested in learning Redis as much as I am, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and check my other videos as well where I talk about transactions, persistence, PubSub and many other things. Now imagine you're boarding a flight today. Your flight is scheduled to depart at 3.30, you arrive at the airport three hours earlier and patiently wait for your flight to depart. Finally, all the passengers have arrived, it's time to board, and the staff starts taking all the boarding passes and validating them and allowing people to get in. It takes time, but they're finally allowed to get in and you watch the chaos. People are lost, they cannot find their seats, people are trying to fit their bags into the compartments, and yes, there's not a space for everybody. It takes more time, it's definitely not efficient, and still, this is the way many software applications work. They wait for big files with lots of data to arrive that has been collected throughout the previous month, day, week. Imagine all the benefits users could have if they had access to data as soon as it arrives or as it is available. Data that has been sitting there just waiting to be processed. And why with airplanes, there's not much we can do because you're not gonna dispatch one airplane per passenger. With applications, it's a different story. Real-time data. And this real-time approach allows us to react to events as they happen, making it easier to identify and react to patterns, anomalies, and what is this? Trends as they occur. A stream allows us to process and analyze data as soon as it arrives and offer great flexibility. We can read all the records from a string, we can read within any specific range, we can read many records at a time, and additionally, multiple applications can read from the same string at the same time. And from there, we can do all sorts of things with our data. We can filter it, group it, and analyze it. And Redis' take on streams, while inspired by Apache Kafka, keeps the simplicity of Redis and is extremely fun and effective to use. Redis Streams is a sophisticated feature, but you can make sense of it by understanding a few of its core concepts. The first one is that it's a new data structure, and like all Redis data structures, it's addressed with a key that corresponds to a value that in turn is of type stream. And this is good because it means that any basic operation that you can perform on any Redis key value pair can also be performed on a stream. For example, you can use the delete command to delete any streams or also use the powerful and sometimes essential expiry command to set a time to leave to any of your streams. And besides that, just like any other data structure in Redis, it is also stored in memory but can also be persisted in disk with RDB. The second concept is that streams are immutable, which means that the ordering of events cannot be changed. And this is because a stream is a continuous flow of data or information. It represents a sequence of elements where elements are added to the end of the sequence over time. Therefore, you can only add new data to the end of a stream. The third concept is that each element of a stream is a set of key value pairs, just like a Redis hash. It's a collection of related pieces where each piece has a key and a corresponding value. So for example, name, Raphael, age, 27, city, Amsterdam, and so on. And the fourth concept is that each element in the stream has a unique ID. And since a stream usually represents a sequence of events over time, by default, this ID is a timestamp. Now let's make a pause, reflect about everything we learned, get back to the airport and talk about these guys right here. So when you're thinking about boarding a plane, there are usually like 160, 170 people going through a gate, talking to one person, but there are usually like two, sometimes three people checking the boarding passes, but you only talk to one. In Redis, you have two approaches. One is having multiple people consuming all the messages that go through a stream. So think about one ticket like this and handing the same ticket to many people so they can all validate the information that is here or you have consumer groups. So consumer groups, they work very similarly to boarding a plane. You're gonna have like multiple people 
getting tickets, but only one of them are gonna get your ticket, only one of them are gonna validate your ticket and gonna let you through. Then they're gonna acknowledge it and they're gonna say, I have already validated this ticket, nobody else needs to validate it again. Otherwise, if for any reason they can't validate your ticket and they just expire, have a heart attack, I know, uh, somebody else can claim your ticket and validate it and let you through or say, sorry, get back to your life for not boarding this plane today. And if you're not using consumer groups, think of it like you're going through security first, you're presenting your ticket, you're saying, I'm allowed to get through security and get into the boarding zone of the airport. And then you're gonna keep your ticket in hands and you're gonna show it to somebody else. So many people are actually reading the ticket out of this stream, right? Getting the information out of this stream, not acknowledging it and not saying, oh, I have read it, nobody else should read it anymore. All right, so I guess you're already tired of chit chatting and let's put our hands in the fire. Let's look at how the commands actually are issued in Redis, how we can publish to the streams and how we can consume from the streams, either through just a normal consumer or consumer groups. Okay, but before more chit chatting, because I want to talk about the sponsor of this video, me. And I want to tell you that if you prefer to read instead of listening to my voice and watching my face, you can find the link in the description for this article here that is written in a more technical way. So don't forget to check it out. All right, everybody. So let's start by putting your hands in the fire. I already have my Redis server instance running on Docker. I'm going to connect to it by following my other tutorial on how to connect to Redis through Docker. I'm going to connect to the Redis command line interface by using the Docker exact command. All right, I'm in. And then for this part of the video, we're going to use the actual article from the content of this video as well, where I go through the basic commands and I show how we can publish the stream and how to consume from a stream as well. So we're going to start by pretending that this application is like a scanner or scanning tickets at a theater and you're getting the information of these tickets and appending to the end of a stream, right? So the first ticket is going to be this one right here. And for adding elements to a stream, we're going to use the X add command. So I'm going to copy it from here. I'm going to paste it here and I'm going to digest it with you right now. So the X add commands receives the key of the stream. Then it receives the ID of the element that is being added to the string. In this case, we're using asterisk because we're going to use the default ID, which is the timestamp of the server. And then it gets all the fields and their corresponding values for this element. So we have the field name whose value is Rafael Deliu. We have the field seat whose value is B12 and then we have the value move ID and session ID with their corresponding value. So let's enter this command. It's going to return to us the ID of the element that was appended to the string, right? Let's create another one this time for my brother who went to the movies with me and he's sitting right next to me at B13 and his name is Arthur DeLeo. Let's press enter once again. We get another ID returned from the server here and you can see that this is the timestamp of the server. So these IDs by default, they're actually gonna be incremental. They're always going up and the lowest one would be 0-0. And this is important right now because for reading from this stream, we're gonna use the X read command. Let me copy it from here. And the X read command receives the key of the stream and the ID from which we want to start reading the messages from this string. In this case, we're going to use 0 0 because this is the lowest one. So we're basically saying that we want to read all the elements in this string. Let's check it out. And okay, we got both elements from our string being printed out right here. All right, so for getting information this way, I need to be issuing this command all the time. What if we want to get these messages automatically? For doing this, we can actually tell Redis to go into blocking state. So this client is going to be reserved for listening to this stream only. So let's see how we can do it. And you can do it by adding a new parameter to this stream, which is the block parameter. And they're basically saying that this is going to be blocked for, let's say, one minute. So let's change this five seconds to 60 seconds, so 60,000 milliseconds. And then let's remove the count because we don't need it. And then we have the key of the stream. And now we have this special ID, which is the dollar sign that is basically saying that we want all the messages that have been created after we issued this command. So let's issue this command. Okay, we're now in the blocking state for one minute. And what I wanna do is I wanna start another session in another window. So this would be a different application right now. This is gonna be our scanner again. This is our reader. So this is simulating an application that is reading from this scanner and from this stream, sorry. And we're gonna add a new one here right now. And this one is gonna be for my mom. 
So she's sitting right next to us and her name is Antonieta de Lille. We see that Brad has returned the ID of the message that was created. In here in our client, it also returned the new ticket that was appended to this stream. Only this one, nothing else. All right, but now you may ask, what if I have a lot of tickets and I wanna scale my application horizontally and I wanna have many replicas of the same application reading these tickets, but I wanna make sure that they don't read the same tickets. What can I do? I can use consumer groups. Let's see how we can get started with consumer groups. And for doing this, oops, so let me clear this window right here. We're still inside our Redis command line interface and we're gonna create a consumer group. So let's get this command right here, which is the X group create. And then you get the command X group create. We get the key of the stream, which is tickets. And then we name our group name, which is gonna be officer group. And we're saying again that I only want to get messages that were issued, that were created after I enter this command right here. So let's enter this command. All right, so now we need consumers. So let's shrink this a little bit and create a new connection to our Redis command line interface. Let's connect to it. All right, so we have two applications here. Let's pretend that these two connections are the same application, two replicas of the same application connecting to our Redis server. And what we're gonna do is, we're gonna use this other command, which is the X read group command. And here I'm basically saying that this is the command, this is the group I wanna listen to, this is the name of my consumer, so this is consumer one and this is the key of the stream I wanna to listen to. And then you have this special ID again, and this special ID is a little bit different than the dollar sign because this one is saying, okay, I wanna get all the messages that haven't been claimed yet. And this is important because you only wanna read messages that haven't been read by other consumers. You don't wanna reprocess a message that has already been processed, right? So let's enter this command. No, let's not enter this yet before, let's also do a blocking operation here. So block, let's say for one hour. Let's see if it works. Okay, it's blocked, nice. And now let's do the same thing. Okay, and this is gonna be consumer two. All right, this is also blocked for one hour here. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna start adding new messages to this stream, All right? So I'm gonna add the same tickets I had already added before. So first this one. Okay, this one was caught by this consumer. You see that only this consumer caught this message. This is the only one that is gonna process this message. So let's see if I add another ticket again. Okay, this one was now caught by the second consumer and the first consumer is not getting this one. Cool, this is working as expected, but what happens if the first consumer actually crashes after receiving the message and before processing it? And for mitigating situations like this, what we're gonna do is, after we have processed the message, we're gonna acknowledge to Redis that we have done it. And the way we do it is by using the x act command. So let's use the x act command. Let's copy it from here. So we have x act tickets, officer group, and then you got the ID of the message. Let's copy the ID of this message right here. And now we're saying that we're acknowledging that this message has been successfully processed by the consumer. All right, you don't have to do anything anymore. This message has been acknowledged and it's not gonna be delivered to any other consumer. But let's say now that this consumer is taking too long, it's probably crashed, we don't know what happened here, and this message is still pending, it hasn't been acknowledged. How can we know which messages are still pending and still needs to be processed? For doing this, we can use the expanding command. And for using the expanding command, I'm gonna copy this from here and paste it here. And what I'm saying here is that I'm gonna issue the expanding command for this stream, for this group, which is wrong here. So let me fix this. So office officer group. And messages that have been idle for more than 30 seconds, minus and plus here is the range of the IDs. So we're basically saying here, consider the smallest possible ID and the largest possible ID, so basically all the messages, and a count of 10, so return only 10 messages. And finally, the consumer that is yet to acknowledge these messages, right? So let's enter this, and you can see the ID of the messages that are still to be acknowledged. We can see the consumer, and you can see for how long they've been there waiting to be acknowledged. 
And what we're going to do now is we're going to use xclaim to claim this message to another consumer. So you're basically saying xclaim, the command, the key of the string, the key of the group, the consumer that is going to get the message, which is going to be the consumer one, the minimum time that the message has been idle, which is 30 seconds here. And finally, the ID of the message. Let's paste the ID of the message here in the end. And okay, return the message for the consumer one. So if you check again, the pending messages, now from consumer one, you're gonna see that this message now belongs to consumer one and it's yet to be acknowledged. All right, and those were the basic and essential commands that we're gonna see today for manipulating Redis streams. There are many more. I suggest you check out my article right here and also Redis documentation on their website for all the technical and specific details of each one of these commands. Redis Streams provides a scalable, robust, fun, and simple solution for dealing with real-time data that has become an essential part of many modern applications. If you like this video, don't forget to check out all my other videos about Redis and to subscribe to this channel. See you around.